was getting ready to use my Apple IIe one day, not long ago, I plugged everything in and turned it on and I heard a pop. This is the inside of the disk 2 drive and you can see clearly right here this chip went pop. Unfortunately this happens all the time when this cable is not plugged in correctly. What I did without realizing it was I plugged the cable in like this. I don't know if you can see that gap right there. Only one row of pins is plugged in there. If you look underneath, you can see this row of pins is not connected. So this row of pins is connected to the wrong row. And unfortunately this happens to people far too often. It's difficult in this controller to put the card or put the cable on backwards, but if you do put it on like this, uh, this will also cause that chip to go pop. So when you're plugging these cables in, make sure by looking underneath here that you've got it plugged in centered so that you don't have it off horizontally, which actually wouldn't be very easy to do because the pins won't let you do it that way. But uh, unfortunately this is all too easy to do. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that chip. I ordered some replacement chips from Mouser and I'll uh, plug things in here and see if it works. These chips are still available. These are a 74 LS125 and I ordered some from Mouser so I had a few spares in case this ever happens again. First thing you got to do of course is pull out the old chip. I went searching inside for the remains of this little bit of ceramic, uh, but I couldn't find it anywhere and I don't hear anything rattling around in there. The drive cover shows some signs here where that chip popped, this discoloration right here. Got a new chip here. Pop it in, press it down, that simple. Fortunately, when that chip blew, I did not have a disc in the drive. I am told that when this happens, the read-write head goes into permanent write mode, so that any disc that's actually in the drive will get track zero erased. I'm ready to test out the drive just to make sure there isn't any damage anywhere else, but before I do, I'm just going to double check. Drive one, connectors on there correctly. And pop the controller in. I'll turn it on without a disc in the drive. And I'll put a disc in to see if it boots. And it's working. All that's left to do is to screw the cover back on.